Great news, Netflix adaptation of Avatar The Last Airbender has been renewed for a season two and three. And as I discussed in my review, I mostly enjoyed the first season, but one of my biggest issues with the show was the changes that they made to some of the characters. And it's these characterizations that I really want them to focus on in the future seasons. So I thought it would be fun to go into a bit more detail discussing the characters, what worked, what didn't, what they can fix, and ultimately rank them from the best to the worst. Hello and welcome to Cinemaze and if you're new here please subscribe to see more content like this. Now as there's a lot of characters here I'm going to rank this as a tier list rather than a number ranking from best to the worst and the tiers I'm going to use are fail. These are characters that I think they failed to adapt well or just did not need to be in this season. Bad. These are characters that I thought were not well adapted but not a total failure. Fine. These characters were okay. I enjoyed them but it felt like they maybe missed a point. Good. These were good adaptations. They mostly resembled their original characters. Great. These were accurate adaptations of the characters that I really enjoyed and then in amazing. I'm bringing this term back from when I used to give my reviews ratings and this just means the best like these are the perfect adaptations of our characters or they actually managed to improve these characters from the original. Now getting into my top category doesn't necessarily mean that they're my favorite character in the show. There might be some in great that I actually enjoyed more overall as a character and that's because I'm ranking these on both how much I enjoyed the character and how good of an adaptation they are but most of the time these two things go hand in hand. Also I'm not ranking every character just the main ones. Some characters like Han or Arnuk there's just not enough of them in in either version of this show for me to rank. And I'm not gonna be including any non-human characters on this list, so no Appa or Momo or Spirits. Also, this is not designed to be a bash on the actors. I genuinely think the issue with this season was the script. And I think a lot of these actors could portray these characters better with a better script and direction. So unless I explicitly praise or critique their acting, this isn't designed to hate on the cast itself, but instead the characterization of the beloved characters from the show. Now let's get right into the ranking, starting with Zuko. Now I thought Zuko was great here. They pretty accurately adapted his story, they didn't change too much, and he has one of the strongest stories of the original show that they stuck the most closely to. The actor really brought Zuko to life with his voice, his mannerisms, his look. He could be both bratty but also sympathetic. This was probably the character I enjoyed the most in this adaptation. They also added a few new things like showing him at Luten's funeral or giving him more of a connection with his crew, which I like, and I thought those additions worked. So overall, a really great adaptation. It doesn't quite get a top tier because he did feel like less of a villain than he does in the original season one, and perhaps they made him a bit too too kind-hearted too soon but if they can show his struggles and his redemption correct in the next seasons he can definitely reach the top tier because Zuko is a great character because of that journey that he goes on across all of the seasons and that's the part that they really need to nail. Let's follow Zuko up with Iroh who I thought was a good adaptation. He is a really hard character to adapt because there's so many layers to his character that slowly get revealed in the original show. Starting as comic relief to wise to regretting his past to fierce and I think we got glimpses of all of these things but not quite on the same level as as the original animation. Of course the original voice is so iconic but I thought the voice they went with for this worked quite well and while he might not have felt as kind or as wise I did think his relationship with Zuko was really strong and that was one of the best parts of this show and my favorite scene of the whole series was a moment that they added in where Iroh decided to join Zuko on the boat. It felt kind, it felt wise and it ended in a tea joke so it just felt like the moment that they really captured this character. Next up we have Aang and I thought he was fine which is a shame. The actor looked the part and he had the physicality to do the role. I've seen him in interviews and he's super energetic, funny and kind. He feels like Aang in real life but unfortunately the script felt like it was holding him back, making him too burdened and serious. They took away all of Aang's youthful energy and fun which really takes away from his original character. They also removed him running away from the air temple when it got attacked which just takes away from his guilt which is weird for a version of Aang who seems more burdened and we never see him waterbend which is just bizarre. At times he feels like an exposition machine just talking to the camera telling us how he's a goofball in instead of showing it. And it's frustrating because I can tell the actor can do better. Just let the actor be himself, have more fun, don't take this too seriously. No matter what the creators say, this isn't Game of Thrones. It is more lighthearted, it is more fun, and that's most noticeable with Aang. And I think if they let him be himself, I think this will feel more like Aang. Let's follow Aang up with Gaiato. And I thought this one was great. He felt kind, he felt wise, but also silly at times. The actor brought a lot of heart to this role, and I'm glad he had a few extra scenes than in the original show. I do wish we saw him fight back more again against the Fire Nation. There's that fan theory that is widely accepted that he broke that airbender rule of killing due to all of the Fire Nation skeletons in the room. And it does add a lot to his character because it shows what he's willing to do to defend Aang and the children. And so I wish they brought that scene to live action. But other than that, I thought this was a great adaptation. Now, sorry, Grand Grand, but this one is a fail. Unfortunately, she was one of the weakest actors in the show and they gave her really bad lines delivering the original Avatar intro, which would be super hard to pull off for any actor. She also became an exposition machine just explaining things to our characters and 
to the audience and I just don't think she worked. Let's go for Jet next, who I thought was great. I was worried adapting Jet might come across a bit cringy because he's the kind of archetype of being a bad boy. But I thought it worked well here. He acted it well. He felt like that original character. He looked like the original character. I don't mind the story changes of moving him to Amashu and helping the team get into the city. That was all fine to me because to his core, he still felt like Jet. And let's follow him with the Freedom Fighters, who I'll give a good. Now, the casting here was fantastic. They managed to get people who looked really like their cartoon counterparts down to specific features like Longshot's nose. So that was awesome. But realistically, they didn't have too much to do here. They barely had any lines. So I can't really give them more than a good. Next up is Katara, and she's at the same level as Aang. I felt like the actress was maybe the least comfortable with her character compared with the other young actors. But again, a lot of that might be down to the script, where she just really didn't have anything to do. They removed a lot of her story, like acting like the mother of the group. They instead gave that to Sokka, trying to be like his dad. They removed any real connection between her and Aang, and she only really started to feel like Katara when we get to the Northern Water Tribe and began to challenge Paku. And so I'd have given her a bad, but the last two episodes push her up to a fine. Now we have June, who I'd give a great to. She doesn't have much screen time and nothing super impressive to push her to the top category, but she felt very comfortable with the character. She looked the part, she sounded the part, and it just felt like a very accurate translation of June while removing Iroh being a bit creepy to her, which was everyone's least favorite part about that character. Next up, we have the Mechanist, who I thought was good. I do think Danny Pudi has the capability to do more with this role, maybe go a bit wackier and cartoonish, but I thought this was a good translation of the character and I'll stick Teo up there with him. Not much to say, they were both good, but they could have been a bit more. Now let's go through the past avatars, all of which I think were handled badly. Kyoshi probably came off the best because she got the most to do, but I still didn't think she was great. I do like the inclusion of her extra lore, which wasn't made at the time of the original show, but has been revealed since. So that was nice that they put that in here, but most of Roku's role was given to her and it honestly felt quite forced. It was like they know that fans love Kyoshi and so they gave her Roku stuff to do and that just takes away from Roku, doesn't really add to Kyoshi. They also made her super aggressive towards Aang, which just felt weird. She's normally very calm and stoic, not shouting at him. And it's weird how all of these avatars told Aang off and said he can't have a team when in the Kyoshi books and other avatar stories, it's shown that every avatar has a team avatar. So overall, she looked apart, but I thought her characterization wasn't great. Same for Kurok. The character looked really good, very accurate to the original. And I liked the inclusion of his backstory, but he didn't feel like Kurok that we saw in Aang's original show. In that show, he says he's more of a go with the flow type, but he did not feel like that here. And the whole point of him is that people didn't like him in the world, but he was actually very good and sacrificed a lot. But here, they also just make us not like him. So that's very weird. And then we have Roku, who I thought was a fail. He's weird, he's goofy, and he has way less to do. He just does not feel like Roku. I don't know what they're thinking. I assume because Kyoshi and Kurok were more serious, they didn't want to make Roku be that serious, but it just took away from all the wisdom, power, and nuance of the character. And it made him a bit weird, and they made him more like Gyato and Iroh. Someone who feels like a breath of fresh air in such a serious show is a welcome addition, but don't do that to Roku. Now let's go to the top of the list with our first cinemazing of the video with Zhao, who I thought was actually improved from the original. I do enjoy the original version of this character, but in that he's more elevated by his voice performance. This time they change him from a well-regarded military commander to more of a nobody. When I saw him in the trailers, I was like, that doesn't look like Zhao. He looks way less prim and proper and more dirty and grimy, but that's actually the point. He's a no one. Iroh and the Fire Lord haven't heard of him. He works in a place no one cares about, but he sees an opportunity and he pounces on it. The actor is doing a great job of finding a balance between taking this seriously and hamming it up and it works. Most of the things he accomplished aren't down to his own merit. It's Zuko who finds and captures Aang. It's Azula who identifies the blue spirit. It's the sages who tell him about Twee and La. But that actually adds to this version, that he's kind of a scumbag and he's stealing all of the credit for glory. I really enjoyed this version and I thought it fleshed him out a bit more. Now for Sokka, I'd give him a good. Of our main trio, this actor felt the most comfortable in the role and he felt most similar to the original version. He has the clearest arc here of not needing to be a perfect warrior, but playing into his own strengths of inventing and planning. He's a bit more serious than his cartoon counterpart, but he still gets a few jokes and funny moments to make him feel like that original character. My main criticism is removing his sexism arc, which was a pivotal arc for his character to learn. That women can be warriors, that's removed here, and so he loses a lot of his growth and that weakens his relationship with Suki. And then we have Suki, who I'd give a bad. I thought her stuff was really awkward. Sure, she looks the part with one of the best costumes in the entire show, but other than that, they removed all of her story and nuance because she no longer humbles Sokka. Instead, she just seems obsessed with him, staring at him, walking in on him, getting changed. It's just awkward. Sure, she makes the mum open the village, but it just came across like she does it because she wants to meet boys rather than for reasons of her own. I thought it was really bad and it's a shame because Suki was never that fleshed out in the original show and they had a chance to improve her here, but instead I thought they made her even worse. And that brings me on to Yue. And I never thought I'd be in a world where I cared more about Yue than Suki, but here we are. They fleshed out Yue a bit more. They gave her bending and connection 
connections to the spirit world, which I don't mind, it makes sense considering her spiritual backstory. She no longer has a forced marriage, removing any kind of awkwardness or feeling like cheating. Even her relationship with Sokka worked because it felt less like a love story and it felt more like two kindred spirits who have managed to connect on this same level. So while Yue is still not the greatest character and she does pretty much exist purely to die, I do think they fleshed her out a bit more and made me care a bit more about her connection with Sokka. And so for that, she gets a good. Although her wig, that definitely gets a bad. And while in the North Pole, let's go to Paku. I thought he was good. He was pretty accurate. He captured the feeling of the character, the master unwilling to change who then opens his eyes due to Katara and makes a change. They removed his connection to Gran Gran, which is understandable because look where she is on the list. No, I'm joking, but that connection always felt a bit forced and unnecessary. And I like that he accepts Katara on her own merits rather than based on a family connection. And I also like how they had the women getting involved as warriors and then getting accepted by Paku and how that kind of reflects the real world story of women being allowed to work after proving themselves in World War II. Now we're going to Boomy, who is a super weird one to me because in terms of performance, I feel like this actor understood the assignment. He was one of the best translations from cartoon to live action with the actor capturing the voice, the quirkiness, the physicality. So the actor here would be in the top tier, but they make some really weird changes to his story. I don't mind them making him a bit more jaded and shutting Marshu off from the world due to the war. Then he re-meets Aang and feels more hopeful again, but they make him so jaded and so angry at Aang. His hatred of Aang feels so forced and it feels so out of character. His lesson to Aang makes no sense, it doesn't feel wise and it just ended up with both of them almost dying. So it felt like it missed the point of Boomy, being crazy but wise and instead made him crazy but angry. I feel like there's a way to retool this story to make it work better if he seemed less hateful and instead he was teaching Aang a lesson but it just didn't work. So we have a great actor doing a great job with a horrible, horrible script which just leaves him somewhere in the middle so we put him in fine. Now we have another top character which is Ozai who gets way more fleshed out here and he stole every scene he was in. Now some people didn't want Ozai in this season because in their original show he was a figure hiding in the shadows. It was more about what he represented but he was never that fleshed out as a character, as a person. But now that we know who Ozai is from the original, now that he's left the shadows, this was an opportunity to flesh him out more and show us more of him from the start, which is what they did. They show how he manipulates both of his children. He seems to hate Zuko but is willing to accept him if he can prove himself and succeed. He's not against using horrible methods to push them to become future leaders and he uses Zuko's successes to push Azula to be even greater. He's using Zhao to distract from his real plan of overtaking Amashu which makes him feel like a real leader rather than someone just waiting in the background in the Fire Nation. He's violent, he's threatening, he has a great screen presence. Daniel Day Kim is doing a great job and absolutely earns his place in season one and pushes Ozai from being a figure who represents the greater threat to feeling like a real person. And let's follow that with Azula who maybe less earned her place in the season. Like I said, I liked how Ozai manipulated her by boosting Zuko's achievements on finding the Avatar, not so much because he cares about Zuko, but instead to push Azula. And while this doesn't feel like the Azula we know from book two, this kind of shows her becoming that version as Ozai pushes her to perfection, showing her gaining the blue flames and lightning, all of that kind of work. But she doesn't really feel like the perfect cold calculated killer that we know from the original show. At times she does do a good Azula voice, like when she reads a letter, but at other times she just feels like a bratty child. So I'm conflicted if I like this version or not. I think it's going to come down to how much she feels like Azula in season two. If she does, then she's going to jump up this ranking and season one will serve as the origin for the perfect Fire Nation princess that we'd know. But if she can't capture season two Azula in season two of this show, she's going to fall even lower down this list and her appearance in season one is just going to feel forced. But for now, she gets a fine. And even worse than Azula are Mei and Ty Lee who really didn't earn their place in this season. There was literally no reason for them to be here. They did nothing. They didn't even have great costumes and they didn't really feel like their characters. It's now going to take away from that fun moment in season two of the original show where Azula recruits them and it feels like they get dragged back into her life after managing to escape it. And now they're just here doing nothing, standing in the background, not feeling like their characters and so they get a fail. Their roles could have easily been filled by Lo and Lee which would have made more sense for Azula. Then we have Sozin. I'd give him a great. We don't see much of him but he's threatening and he gets in on the action. No complaints from me. Lieutenant G was fleshed out way more here than in the original and I'm going to give him a great. He's on Zuko's ship, he's annoyed by how Zuko acts and he's conflicted between him and Zhao, but he ultimately sides with Zuko. And honestly, I really enjoyed this version of him. I love his sideburns and I love that he looked like a character from a cartoon. I bought into his issue with Zuko, but I liked how Zuko ended up caring for their division and I liked that whole plot line. They just added a lot of depth to what is ultimately a side character. And in the original show, I never once thought what happened to Zuko's crew after season one. But coming into season two, I wouldn't mind seeing more of G. Maybe we get to see some Fire Nation soldiers turning against the Fire Nation and siding with Zuko. That could be interesting.
Jin. Another great character is the Earthbender who challenged Iroh when Iroh was captured. What a great emotional side character. From what I can tell, his character is called Captain Dixit. I don't think he's in the original show, but the performance here was fantastic. When you get great performances in this show, compared with some of the child actors, they really stand out. And I thought this character was just great and it stood out to me, and so I'm sticking him on my list. And finally, of course, the person to go into the top category is the Cabbage Merchant everyone's favorite joke from the original show that they brought into live action they brought the same actor back and it was a great moment they did it perfectly and so of course he gets a sin amazing and i'm so glad that they brought him back so yeah that's my list let me just have a look at the placement see if i agree where they are in the top category i agree with that order i thought Zhao was the best one here he obviously had the most to do but i feel like they added the most to him and then they added a bit more to ozai and cabbage merchant was just really fun iroh was still my favorite of the good he was almost at a great and then i'd say it goes soccer and then ua and then the other character Characters in good and I'd move the freedom fighters down to the bottom of good I'd move G and Captain Dixit up these characters just stood out to me they definitely had more to do and so I'd stick them a little bit higher up than the other people in great who I really enjoyed and felt like their cartoon versions but had less to do and then fine and bad I'm happy with that order and then in the fail category I think I'd move Grand Grand down he was probably the worst character in the show and I'd put yeah Roku at the top of fail because even though I do think it failed to capture Roku I did enjoy him a bit more he was a bit more fun to watch on screen because at least him being a bit silly was was doing something rather than just bad acting or standing in the background so yeah overall that's my list it's pretty spread out and there were maybe more characters on here that i liked than i realized but it's just a shame that some of the key characters particularly ang and katara aren't as strong as they should have been i don't think anyone here is completely ruined and they can totally fix these things for season two if they listen to feedback and if they just let the actors be themselves and so that's my ranking of all the characters in netflix adaptation of avatar the last airbender Thanks for watching. Let me know your rankings in the comments below and your thoughts on mine. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to see more Avatar content like this going forward. But for now, thanks for watching. Cinemaze.